Hi there folks, wanted to do a quick update, it's been uh, 6 or 7 days since we started the tomato seeds indoors, in those seeding trays, and the last week we've had freezing temperatures at night, it was minus 1 to minus 3 degrees in the night and uh, 2 to 5 degrees in the daytime, it's currently three and a half degrees out here it was snowing a bit yesterday and we expect uh, at least two or three more days such as those so the tomato seedlings and the red beet seeds we also started in the same day they germinated in the nights we bring the two trays indoors and in the days they are kept outside and I'll show you where we keep them in just a minute. Also, I wanted to show you a bit of the progress of the seeding bed. I've had some chats with uh, a few people over at the Discord server. And uh, also with Nisa, my Australian online friend from uh, our small footprint channel regarding the temperatures at which we start the seeds and uh, how the cold frame behaves so i wanted to also show you the cold frame and how it's progressing despite the low temperatures we've been having in the recent week even though it's only three degrees outside you can see a bumblebee here is working pollinating our honey, honeyberry plants which uh, bloomed in the last week, in the last 10 days even though the temperatures were low the honeyberries are not worried by uh, minus 3 to minus 5 degrees at all their blooms survive even lower temperatures sometimes so you can see that the soil temperature is about 7 degrees and uh, this is despite the fact that we had maybe four days of sub zero temperatures and cloudy cool days and you can see that in the seedling bed the cold frame we already have some germination those are probably the zinnias and you can see here another type of flower this is the red tamarind which has flowered uh, which has uh, sprouted i see some Brassicas over here, probably kale and some stuff. Oops, and some stuff already germinating here as well. And you can see those mounds of soil, like a raised soil over there with some seedlings poking through. This is the usual artifact of seedling uh, hundreds of seeds, and they start germinating collectively and they push the whole crust of the soil. Well, it's not really the crust, but the surface layer of the soil collectively upwards so it raises the whole soil but when we water it with the garden shower it evens out and it's not a problem at all for seedlings uh, I'm not sure if that will be seen on video but this here is a mole hill a mole came from underground and dug into the bed probably looking for the worms we have high worms and uh, soil life activity here but this is expected this happens almost every year so we deliberately plant more stuff just to offset for the potential slug damage ground cricket damage mold damage etc here as well you can see how the surface layer is cracked and if i'm to remove this piece now probably under under here will be lots and lots of seedlings uh, wanting to poke through We'll fix that with some watering in the coming days. So now I will walk a bit in the orchard and talk for a minute about seedlings and temperatures. While also taking the chance to show you the current development in the, the range of fruit trees and bushes which we have growing here. As well as the ground cover. And spring bulbs as well. So... In this cold frame here, 
we don't put frost sensitive stuff like cucumbers, zucchini, peppers, tomatoes, etc. Because they require a bit higher temperature to germinate and then even a slight frost such as minus 3 could kill them. One way to deal with that is to seed them in the bed later. And that's exactly what we'll be doing next week when uh, it is forecasted that uh, the low temperature nights will be over and we'll be having above zero nights. So in the cold frame we'll start seeding Passata or canning tomatoes and those will be germinating well without the danger of being uh, frosted and killed and they will develop slower yes but uh, in the same time we don't rush with them because we don't usually need them before early autumn or late summer so For our main tomato crop, the salad crops and the salad tomatoes and the cherries, etc., as well as the peppers, we start the seedlings in trays. Those trays I showed you in the previous video. And we keep them for a couple of days until they germinate inside, indoors, in the hallway, where it's about 18 degrees. And this is enough for the tomatoes to germinate without any pre soaking without any special treatment, without tissue paper, toilet paper, wet paper or anything. Just sprinkle the seeds and they germinate nicely. And after they germinate, we start taking them outside every day and bringing them indoors every night if the temperature is forecasted to be low. We usually look for below 5, but they can survive without being killed at about zero. So. That is uh, how we manage to grow the seedlings in the very cool springs which we have. And at the same time we harden them off because they don't spend their days indoors. So they're exposed to UV lights from uh, early on. And they don't need any hardening off period when we decide to transplant them or pot them up or put them in the garden. And that is also the main reason uh, behind our multi sowing because a single tray can uh, host all of our sour and cherry tomato needs. And then when we start potting them up, it's already warm enough in spring and the nights are warmer, so it's not a problem to keep the potted up tomatoes outside. This way we are saving some space and also saving time and working with the minimal effort possible as well as, as, well as doing a selection of the toughest plants. So it's important for everyone to devise a system which works well for his own conditions. To sum it up, we start flowers and cold hardy crops in the cold frame and then we start tomatoes and cucurbits indoors, keeping the already germinated plants outside every day when the daytime temperature is about zero. And we keeping keep them also outside when the day when the nights are above zero. This hardens the plants, allows for minimal intervention from us, minimal labor, and hardy plants. And now for the new development here up front, in front of the house. Last month, some relatives we have living in Germany, they bought a small, low quality uh, greenhouse made of very thin aluminum profiles and very thin polycarbonate sheets with the intention of installing it in their backyard in the house where they live in Germany. However, the landlords uh, did not permit to install the greenhouse, so having no option to return it, 
they decided to send it to us as a gift for which we're grateful but as the whole structure of the greenhouse is composed of very thin aluminum strips some of the pieces are as thin as a um, jar cap you can imagine how thin metal that is and also it was transported in bulk just piled into the trunk of the car some of the profiles came to us bent so it was hard straightening everything up plus even if it's tightened up as much as i can it's not very sturdy because everything is very thin and bendy another problem which we had is that the instruction how to put it together was uh, photocopied with very low quality so <laughs> it was hard to read and i had to improvise in spots where it was very unclear how to put things together and finally when we did the outer shell without putting the walls the polycarbon pieces there was this sudden windstorm which took the whole structure and toppled it across the yard which additionally folded some of the profiles and this required more work and uh, fixing of profiles and bending stuff backwards etc so i will probably have to retrofit it with some steel profiles in the future or some planks to keep it more taut but we decided to still give it a go and see how it behaves in order to keep an eye on it and to prevent the worst of the weather from getting to it we decided to put it in the in our very small uh, backyard garden and i'm standing right now in that structure even though outside is uh, about three degrees you can see that the thermometer here shows almost 15. it's uh, not a sunny day it's cloudy and uh, there's some wind as you probably heard from the previous clip in the video but still it's sheltered place away from the wind and with higher temperatures than clearly outdoors so we decided to use that as a sea starting station and also in summer to plant some crops in, into it and see how it behaves let me show you around so this is the bed frame seedling starting area which is uh, a cold frame essentially with some plastic over it it's been developing very nicely, but I'll be making a separate video about that. And this here is the Big Brother, which is a small 7 square meter growing space. I have anchored that with 50 centimeters of uh, thick metal and tied the base pieces to it on five sides, five spots. So it has not moved since then. It has two opening windows up here and the door. And indoors, you can see that the wife already dug over some of the very trampled soil which we have here in the front yard because the kids play around here all the time. And she planted some of our own lettuce, which we uh, did some starts, which you have probably seen in a previous video. So it's an oak leaf lettuce and uh, red uh, sales, I think, is the variety and the mixture of open pollinated lettuces as well as here this is the remaining lettuce start you can see it's mixed colors and uh, we have saved some to give to some friends and this is the start of the show the tomato seedlings you can see how much they have grown in just six i think so seven days after putting the seeds into the soil most of the varieties have germinated nicely some have germinated uh, very few of the seeds this is normal because most of those i mean all of those seeds are saved by us all of them are with unknown age some are older and some of them we didn't have a lot to begin with and you can easily judge the speed of development of each of the different varieties by uh, the time it germinated and how uh, open the leaves are and when they will develop their first leaf I will talk about the varieties later when they have their proper leaves and I'll be starting to pot them up. And this is the 
red beads you can see that this side is more germinated than the other one this is because it this is an earlier variety and this is our later one we had to buy red beet seed this year because our was moldy so that's about it this is the growing space which we have uh, up here we have space for two more of those trays which we'll be putting up later with uh, cucumbers and zucchini and uh, squash and more plants down here we can put some trays as well and this space is deliberately left larger of course i can put another shelf here but this will make um, you need a larger space to have an abundant light down here so the seedlings which will go under the main level they don't get elongated and they don't get light start i'll be posting more about this space and our seedling growing in the coming weeks when the weather turns nicer and stuff starts growing faster but this time this type of system is very convenient for people who don't have much space indoors and you just want to overnight the seedlings in cold nights and otherwise you can keep them outdoors also a protected area such as this allows for uh, low pest pressure and growing in trays at least in our case deprives access to slugs and crickets and other ground dwellers which will be eating the plants and also the enclosure stops birds pecking at the little seedlings so that was about it for today our seedlings are progressing nicely even though we've had cold weather and action will certainly ramp up here in the coming weeks because i have so much stuff to show you once the weather turns for the better and i can spend a bit more time outdoors so we can start looking at different topics i have perennial herbs to show you and the development of the fruit bushes as well and lots of other stuff so stay tuned <laughs>